Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we're here at EHA 2018. It's Friday afternoon. My name is Blake Morrison and I'm here with Avanesh Din Mohammed. He is from the Netherlands Comprehensive Cancer Organization. And he has some very interesting data that is being presented as a poster on plasma cell leukemia, a rare disorder that uh, doesn't get a lot of attention uh, in comparison to other hematologic malignancies. Uh, but uh, the poster that he has is looking at a, a, a data set of patient uh, outcomes over time and love to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So uh, thanks for the kind introduction and as you indeed clearly um, demonstrated, uh, primary uh, plasma cell leukemia is a very rare form of uh, plasma cell malignancy and because there's no prospective intervention studies or at least not that abundant, mm -hmm. um, information from population-based cancer registry uh, can provide uh, the information how these patients are treatment in routine management and what their outcomes are. Yes. Because, you know, mostly those prospective intervention studies, they include selected patient populations. Right. So you don't know how to, if you can extrapolate those data to a daily practice setting. Yes. And that was the aim of our study, uh, to assess primary therapy and overall survival among these patients in the Netherlands. Good, good, good. And so, um it appears that you looked at different patient segments over time because yeah. certainly there have been the introduction of stem cell transplant. Yes, exactly. There's been the introduction yeah, yeah. of new therapies that treat myeloma, which are commonly used to treat this disorder. Yes, yes. So tell us a little bit about the patient segmentation and how that changed over time in terms of the outcomes of these patients. Yes, so indeed we um, um, divided these patients into three uh, calendar periods based on the introduction indeed of uh, autologous stem cell transplantation and also the introduction production of novel agents commonly used in multiple myeloma. So what we basically did, so besides those three periods, we also divided patients into three age categories because mm -hmm. multiple myeloma therapy is usually age-based. Yes. So we have patients of 65 uh, and younger or 65 mm -hmm. and above. So what we basically saw in those two age groups over time, um, all these patients uh, received more antineoplastic therapy over time. Mm -hmm. And was, what was especially encouraging is that we saw in the younger patient group um, that more patients received an autologous stem cell transplantation. Okay. So that's what was quite an encouraging um, finding. And in the elderly, it was also applied, but not as often as in the younger, in their younger counterparts. Did the, the, did the, the change over time of, of the therapies lead to better outcomes for patients in terms of longer survival or at least you know, better quality of yeah. life? You know, yeah, so, um, so we did a multifarable analysis, so we, we, yeah, like I said, we had information about therapy, about the age of the patient and the period, and also about sex. So these factors we could, uh, could include in the multifarable analysis. So what we first did, we had a model that did not include the therapy, mm -hmm. and there we saw an effect of a period, suggesting that over time patients had better outcome in comparison to earlier periods. Okay. And also we saw a prognostic effect of older age. Yeah. However, when you incorporate the therapy into that multifarable model, the effect of period and age diminished. It was not significant anymore. That the hazard ratio that was to one, so it was not, not significant. Yeah. Which actually tells us that the um, improvement in survival over time is contributed to the changing therapy in the Netherlands of these patients, to more intensive therapy, more autologous stem cell transplantation, especially in the younger patients, that accounted for the improvement over time. And furthermore, what was also relevant, the effect of age was also not significant anymore. What tells us that whenever a patient gets treatment, then age is not a factor. So also all the patient may benefit from treatment, although right. it's can be a quite aggressive treatment. Well, and I think that also reflects as clinicians get you know better Used. in managing these yeah, agents, yeah. or if it's a stem mm -hmm. cell transplant, getting better in managing the um, the the the, uh, the toxicities yeah, so, over time uh, with those. And and we've seen that in the myeloma space yeah, as well. Yeah, so. yeah. So the supportive care measures improve, and that also accounts for the improvement over time. So uh, yeah. Well, that's encouraging. So is the Netherlands doing any prospective clinical trials in this patient population? Yeah, so uh, indeed, uh, that's a good question. In, uh, in the Netherlands, we have uh, a specific HOFUN study for these patients with uh, primary plasma cell leukemia. Mm -hmm. So I think future um, uh, randomized trials need to show how we can improve outcome of these patients. And thereafter, population-based studies is needed to see if 
um, these benefits shown in random mouse trials uh, do also well for patients managed in daily practice. So I think it's complementary to each other, these types of research. That's great. Well, yeah. we know that Hovan does great quality yes, yes, work yeah, and, and yeah. They, they do it fast. Yeah, so yeah, we'll so, be uh, uh, eager to see yeah, the yeah, results yeah. of these studies yeah. and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next conference and maybe yes, you can talk and to, yeah, get, yeah. get an update. Yeah, an update also. So uh, that would be wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming by. No, thank you very much. Okay.